welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. So in the last eight episodes, we've kind of been doing a lot of general setup, and of course, we've been setting up our encounter. Now that's that. Now that that's finally correct, I want to look at getting our starter Pokemon and forming a party. So I'm going to show you what I've got so far, and in the next couple of episodes, I will show you how to get to this point. First things first, if we start the level uh, and I go up to here, I can choose my starter. For anyone who's been in the Pokemon groups on Facebook or in the Discord or on or has already been subscribed to the YouTube channel, you've probably seen our three starters already. Um, now, at the moment, there's no chance to roll for Shiny, so that's kind of like the current Pokemon games you can keep restarting your game until you get a shiny um, but I might add that in it should be su super simple to do but um, yeah we'll um, we'll think about that let me know in the comments if you want us to roll for shiny on on start but let's pick tail flame for now so nothing's technically happened in the actual screen all I've done is I've clicked a yes box um, but if I click T to open up our main menu we created in a previous video I can click on party and he's in there we have our we have our tail flame sorry about the world composition is deprecated thing I'm gonna get rid of that um, and it's got his health it's got current XP I've, I've given him an XP amount just to test it, it set a level and it's got his name I didn't mean to close that um, <laughs> let's do that again let's pick a different one now for testing purposes let's do Oster T party uh, and then he's got I, I set his health to very low just for testing as well, off to level 5. We can close this menu down now and return to walking around. Now, if we run over to our encounter um, and we just start looking around. Oh, I've moved my character. I forgot to change that. It's loaded in Oster, the Pokemon we've selected, and we've got our random encounter. If I press play again and I pick something else, let's go for her badger uh, and then run over to our grass it will show us her badger hopefully and hopefully a different pokemon you never know we'll see it might be oster again who knows it is oster again but then we got her badger so that's spawning our creatures in how we want to so how do we get to this point well i started off by in our creature list i created a new bp called ringmon start bp uh let's open that up and on the viewport, all it is, I just picked a sphere, but obviously this will be whatever my starting item is. Uh, my concept eye is going to be a ring that you wear like a bracelet, and it stores your Pokemon in it, or Ringmon. Uh, and I've just put a box collision in it for now. Then uh, I've gone over to our event graph, and let's do this in the correct order. Um, obviously, the first thing we want to know is we've begun our overlap, so we cast our third person character. And we enable uh, our input. And if we leave that, we disable our input. But that's actually not so much important anymore because we can get rid of that by just saying no on the box. But it's good to have it in just in case. I suppose if we walk out of the bounds, we don't want to still be able to press E and get this bound. So that's just, it is important to have that, I guess. And we're using the, control, the player controller to drive that. When we press E inside the box with that enable input, we're going to cast to the third person character we're going to get our, uh, we're going to cast it to our player character and we're, we're getting a new boolean I've set up in the third person ca uh, character called has a Pokemon this isn't a boolean you'll be using very much but it's important in the sense that you don't want to a you don't want to be able to pick a second starter you might also want one of those things in Pokemon where you can't go out of the bounds or like a, an, a, uh, an NPC will tell you not to go out there this is good by saying we do not have a Pokemon. So if we don't have a Pokemon, that NPC will stop us, right? So it's it's very useful for very little things, but it's still useful. If we have a Pokemon, it will print string to tell me I have a Pokemon once I have one, and I so I can't pick up two. Uh, and then we get this accept Pokemon widget, which is very important. We'll come across that in a second. We add that to our viewport, and we also set our input mode to UI only so that we can't move our character around while we're making our decision and we show our mouse cursor so we can we can do that so 
after we've enabled our input now, we want to be able to select which Pokemon we want. So what I've done is I've exposed this variable called uh, Ringmon name, and I've exposed it so that I can um, I can actually compare the name. So I can give each individual thing a name, um, and it'll find me that Pokemon. Then we're getting all actors of class, so that means there's going to have to be one in the world. Temtem actually does this. If you go into the main area, they've actually got one of each Temtem in uh, an enclosure, and that's how they're doing this. So they're not being sneaky about it. They've actually got uh, a, an actor you can they can grab in the world. Uh, they've just done it in a very clever way, so it's not hidden away behind some wall. They've just been like honest about it. <laughs> uh, and then we're doing a four each loop for our uh, master creature, uh, and we're just getting that name we've set, and we're just checking that it equals uh, a creature that's actually uh, in the world. If it does. We set the we, we are going to set a member, but we're going to get our player character, um, and we're going to cast to the third person character. Now I've created a, a new party. I'll show you this in a minute, but I've set a new variable up using something we've just created. So we'll we'll do that in a minute. Um, and what that's do the reason for that is just that it's um, we can set it to be Pokemon we ought to be given or receive through like a professor. Or you could do eggs through this, etc. Um, and we're just setting that to the point where we know what we need to. We will. The, we what we know what the system needs to give us. And through that, we're getting our creature info, our creature stats, our creature IV, and our creature EVs. And we're putting that into our Ringmon build strut. Um, obviously, I've made the strut here. Uh, and I'm also setting one member of our info, which is setting the level to five, uh, which is what you get all your creatures in Temtems and in Pokemon. They always come through at level five, uh, and for that reason, <clears throat> we uh, we can set that manually, um, and then everything else can just stay the same. Um, so that new strat I made. So let's go back into our creatures. There is a Pokemon, a Ringmon build. Now this Ringmon build is a setup of. <clears throat> oh, is it going to open? Uh, oh yes, it's open up here. Um, it's it's basically just a strut filled with all this information. And the reason I've done this is to make my life easier storing Pokemon information in our slots. It saves me having to set four different things per slot. I can just set this as a slot. So that brings us on to our party. So we have a party strut as well. <laughs> Lots of struts. I'm sure we have a party strut. It might be uh, set up actually in our third person area. It, it is. Yeah, so we have our party info strut and then we have our party strut. I don't think... So the party info strut is just party strut. <clears throat> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So ignoring the Ringmon build strut, We have a party info strap that has all the same information, but it has an extra boolean called slot set. And then that goes into our party strap, which is slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six. Um, this Ringmon build will probably be used um, differently down the line. Uh, I'm using that just for our current Ringmon, that's why. So. That will get set into our, yes, sorry, I've remembered what I've done now. So this one here is our Ringmon build strap, which we have put into our third person character. So let me open up my third person character so you can see. Um, yeah, so down here, our current Ringmon is our Ringmon build. <clears throat> so that is just looking at the this information, these four key struts we've created so far. That way we can set everything we need for, um, we can set everything we need for any creatures that we want to push through to the player or vice versa. Then that goes into um, our party strut. It goes directly into here, which is made up of um, this information. So we have the same four things for our party info strap, but we have an extra slot set. And then that gets set into here, right? 
So we can now get all this information and decide whether there is anything in here in the first place. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Hopefully it will make sense in a moment. So if we go back to our accepted Pokemon Ringmon start BP. So yeah, so we are looking for the creatures in the world. Once we have those creatures, we can get their info, their stats, their IVs and their EVs and push them into our Ringmon build strut, which is held stored within our third person character. In the third person character, the only thing we have at the moment running is a main menu, which I've set up an input action for. Um, and it flip flops, uh, which I don't think is the correct way of doing it at the moment. I, I need to test it a little bit more. But it creates our pause menu widget. We set that menu widget as a, as a variable that we can use in a moment. We add it to our viewport. We set our input mode to game and UI. And then we move, we, we show our mouse cursor. We then get the player controller and off the B flip flop. We just remove from parent that pause menu. We set the input mode back to game only and we stop showing our mouse cursor. That's all that's happening in our third person character. Now we need to save all of our party information. Um, and to do that, we also need to do um, a new save information. So. Within our Ringmon game instance, I'm going to close all this down now that I've showed you uh, these struts and what I've got in them. <clears throat> um, oh my god, I do that every time. Every time I do that, oh my god. Uh, Ringmon game instance, that's what we need to open up. So we now have, uh, I'll open up the BPI as well, the interface BPI. Uh, I've got a new uh, uh, function called save party information. That's saving our Ringmon party, which is the party struct, our player location, which is just a vector, and our player rotation, which is just a rotator. This is for when we come out of our encounter. Next, we have our Ringmon game instance. So obviously I've set that up here. I've clicked on that to get the actual event. And very similar to below, we're saving our creature party, our player location, our player rotation, and we're getting that from from here uh, and then we set that party save and then we set it to a new game slot that game slot being party slot is the slot name and the user index is 201 so now we just need to save this information before we go into an encounter well we do that in our encounter bp um, we can call this by the way in lots of different scenarios but all we're trying to do at the moment is get our encounters working but we'll need to set this as well in our battle encounters as well. So all I've done to our encounter is I've set a sequence at the end. One being it saves the encounter info, which will set that push us through to our encounter world. But before we do that, we have to set our party information before we push through to our save encounter information. <clears throat> so we're getting the game instance. We're casting to the third person character. Um, that's already happening here actually sorry so from the game instance all we need to do is save party information do not forget to put oh, it should already be done but don't forget to have your class information here your interface bpi in your class settings you should already have it if you've been following the encounter information over but it's just a precaution if you haven't done it at this point um from the third person character we're getting our ring one party our actor location and our actor rotation and we're we're pushing that into our uh save party info message just like we did with this but it's just this that safe party information instead. We'll cover off the second half of this in the next episode. Um, because from here on, you should have these working now. Run some print strings to make sure it's giving you the right information from, from this. Um, I always check the name is correct or something like that. I'll just do a print string at the end to make sure that's okay. Or you could check individual information if you want to as well. Uh, it's completely up to you. Um, or just check that it's true, things like that. But don't forget to test all of this. Make sure it is working. Um, <clears throat> the next thing you want to do is, well, the next thing we're going to be doing, it won't work yet because we haven't got the widget actually, but it should at least tell you on an overlap what Pokemon you've got. So for example, if I go uh, and do a print string, like so. Now, I don't even need a menu to do this, but um, 
you can literally just walk in there and it should tell me which Pokemon's which. Or what Ringmon is which, you know, you know what I mean. True, true, true. Okay, it's telling me true. Never mind. Let's um instead let's do uh let's try it a different way. Let's just get that name. Let's get that name. And it should tell me which one's which if I test the name instead. Um, true means it's it's found something, so it's still working. Obviously, well, it is working. Uh, Herbadger, Tailflame, Osta, Osta, Tailflame, Herbadger. So it is working, um, and that's the best way to test it. So at this point, you should have three individual um, uh, boxes that um, tell you the ring non name against the creatures in the world. Now, my creatures are in here. They're, they're hidden in here but to be honest when I press start they are actually behind they move to behind but that's fine it doesn't matter it's all smoke and mirrors right we can put a wall there they you'd never know a thing right um, and it will just tell me that it's found the one it's looking for um, yeah so just make sure you've got your ringmon name correct and of course just follow the code along I'll go through it one more time um, just this top half this bottom half should all be pretty self-explanatory to be honest but um begin overlap cast a third person character enable the input when we found that third person character get all actors of class with the creature master and we're going to do a for each loop and we're going to get the creature info we're going to do a break that struct to get the info and we're going to check the name against the ring on name we've exposed um on the outside in the in the editor and in the branch we'll check to see if it's true if it is true we're gonna cast. We're gonna get cast our third person character again. Apparently, I don't know why I did that twice. Actually, thinking about it, I could have just set up. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's fine. It's it works. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with it. it it's silly code, but we'll we'll go with it. Cast a third person character. Set that current ring on. Then we're gonna make a struct for these four values for the build, and then we're gonna get that basic info and we're gonna set the member of current level to five, and we're gonna drive that through our current info. And then we're just going to plug that into basic info, plug creature stats, IVs and EVs into here to create our poke, our ringmon build struct into our current ringmon that we're, we're looking at. Okay, and that should, in theory, find each three individually as long as you've named them correctly in both the creature and in that box. And then we're just pressing E to get the, um, the widget, which we're going to create, or I'm going to go through next episode. Um, once we've done our, our widget in the next episode, we can then start updating our spawner to get the current our, our ringmon party and things like that. Okay, um, so yeah, um, hopefully you should be at that point where you can see the three starters that you you are hoping to see just through that um, that print string. Yeah, all right, that should be where you're at now with me, um, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.